Oh boy, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs, and welcome to what these machines probably call the storage unit of doom. This week on Junkyard Digs, a motorcycle I've been meaning to do a video on for years. Let's get it going. First of all, thank you everyone for joining us for today's episode. It is very last minute because I don't know how to do math and I got my calendar all screwed up and the drag races are next weekend, not this weekend. So I can't do a video on the satellite about the drag races for another week, which is okay because I have at least a week and a half of work to do on that car. With that being said, we're diving into the storage unit of doom to find something to revive this week. And I'd say that this Suzuki GT185 is the perfect candidate. Let's go check it out. So this is a motorcycle I bought probably three years ago off Facebook Marketplace. Uh, I have another one that I got in high school and tore it apart and never finished it. Now that bike was missing a lot of stuff that this one has, but as most projects turn out, the parts bike turns out to be the better bike. And I think this is the one that we're gonna put some time into this week and see if we can get it running. If you know anything about these old Suzuki's, there's something very unique about the GT series. And that is the fact that they are two-stroke engines. That is a two-stroke, two-cylinder engine on a street-legal motorcycle. This is not a dirt bike. This is a motorcycle. In my opinion, this is probably the most badass-looking cylinder head and engine on any motorcycle ever. And these things, if you've ever seen one or seen footage of them, sound ridiculous and look like they could be a lot of fun. I've seen in the comments for years people saying they wanted to see a motorcycle revival. And honestly, I've always wanted to do one. Thing is, I never had the chance, and now, ironically, I don't have a choice. Funny how that works, isn't it? All right, you can't be that heavy. Come on. There we go. Come on. Let go of the stove of my parts. It's stuck. How is it stuck? Get my back. Okay, there we go. Okay, into the truck. shop and we have our 73 Suzuki GT185 ready to have some wrenches turned on it. It is finally warm outside. The satellite's stuck waiting for parts. This is the perfect thing to work on this week and I am really excited to finally get to ride one of these because I've had one in a bucket of parts for like seven years and I've never even heard one run. I did send a picture of this to a couple of buddies and Dalton got back to me saying hey uh just so you know coincidentally you're not the only one releasing a motorcycle video this week. Derek from Rice Grip Garage is doing a revival on an abandoned Harley, I believe. So go check that out on their channel. I mean, what are the odds that I finally pulled the trigger on this thing after sitting on it for three years and it's the same week that there's another revival? Does it even spin? Oh, good. I'm glad I checked that now after I hauled it all the way to the shop. Let's give this thing a good look over. So, as you can see right here, we're missing a side cover. I have that somewhere. This one's also missing. I don't remember where those are. I just remember seeing them all the time. They're probably in that storage unit. Up on the Speedo, we're registering 5,800 miles. A pretty decent number there. So red line's up around 8,500. That's probably really interesting to experience. I'm missing a key. I just remembered slash realized. Uh, both mirrors are there. The seat's just sitting here. Our tank is also just sitting here. Looks like it's missing some kind of a strap. How is it? Ooh, ooh, that's not great. Our rear tire's got plenty of wear on it, but eh, I bet he'll still hold air. All the light bulb plastics look good. The wiring harness is present. Battery cables are well, still here. Our mufflers look to be in pretty sh good shape. The bottom is the side that counts. They look pretty damn good. A lot better than the other ones I have, which are rusted out. Our carburetors are pretty gummed up. They're definitely gonna need to come off and get cleaned. The engine itself is very corroded and covered in stuff. Our throttle moves and our clutch seems to work well, as well as the brakes actually. So I guess that's that. Let's pull a spark plug and see if this sucker's got spark. Come here. There we go. Ooh, those look really good. Hell, they look like they were running perfect stoic when, when the bike was last running. 
I'll probably not have to do any fuel adjustments if I can get these to actually flow like they did back then. Let's check for spark. Oh shit, wait, I don't have a key. Of course I'm not gonna have spark. Okay, backtrack a little bit. Let's see if I can get this key out of here. I need to pull you down, can I? Or do I need to remove that piece of metal? Oh, nope. Sweet. Found some jumper cables and a battery. Got those hooked up. Let's see what's going on here. Looks like since the starting system is separate, this is basically just an on-off switch for the whole electrical system. So I'm guessing these two orange wires here are the two I need to cross. Hey, look at that. Oh, the blinker's blinking. Holy cow. The front and the rear work. Oh. It cranks. Oh, and the horn works. Hell yes, best investment ever. Hey, look at that. She's got spark. This must be a CDI bike. I figured for sure 73 would be points. Pulled both spark plugs. Let's get a little penetrating oil down in there. There we go, there's one. This way, in case the rings are a little sticky after sitting and they're stuck in the pistons and not wanting to snap out to the wall of the cylinder and actually seal in the cylinder, this gives them the best chance to do that. I'm going to move my face when I hit this button. Oh, okay. Well, I guess the penetrating oil was a little overkill. This seems to have plenty of oil in it already. Yep, it's still in there, uh, right in the eyes. I might literally need to get some brake clean in there to help flash that off or it'll never run. If you've never worked on a two-stroke, first of all, I envy you. Uh, second of all, as you know, they are very, very easy to flood and susceptible to flooding, unlike a four-stroke. Uh, there's still just a ton of oil in that cylinder. I foresee many a fouled spark plug in our immediate future. Open this sucker up. Now no one better complain about me not having oil in the cylinders, because trust me, there's oil in the cylinders. The starter's very weak, but it actually tried a little bit there. Uh oh. annoying. <laughs> oh damn. Let me see what I can do for a better battery. Hmm. Well, as it turns out, both spark plugs were completely flooded with oil. So I don't know if our injection pump is acting up and just sticking wide open or what. Oh boy, what is going on with this cylinder? <laughs> Why is it just pumping out oil? Both of them now. Look at that. Okay, so my current working theory is that this thing sat for a long time and maybe the injection pump leaked, even though it's uphill, but, but it's below the fluid level, so possibly and I think what it did was fill the bottom of the crankcase with oil. So I've got the plugs cleaned off and shoved back in. Give it a little more juice. Oh shit, that ran. Come on, girl. starters is not doing it but it's trying to run when I shut the throttle off. I'm gonna pull the plugs again because I'm sure they're fouled and it's gonna hydro lock it again but if we keep this up this might work out. 
All right, one more time. I did notice that there's a couple plugs missing out the bottom of the carbs, so before I can hook my fuel tank, I just rigged up to the carburetors. I might have to drive home and steal those off the parts bike. Come on. Hey, that was runny. Hell yes. That's doing it. It's running. for a second. Holy crap, it actually ran! And oh my god, that's probably the thickest pot of smoke I've ever made in this shop. It was coming out of there like a solid, look at that. I better get the fan. <laughs> it took a good second to clear out because I think what we were seeing there was all the oil in the bottom of the crankcase laden with a flammable liquid and it was somehow burning it <laughs> like a solid fuel. That's pretty damn good. Let's see if I can jump back and forth. intake noises up here. That is way too cool. All right, let's go home, get some parts, see if we can get the rest of the stuff on here and make this thing run for good. Ah, yes, the old depot, AKA the parts shed. Let's see what we can find. Do, do, do. Aha, another Suzuki GT185. What do you know? And on this one we have, well, most importantly, we have a key. I'm going to be stealing that. So over here is a spare motor. We've got a tank. Come on. Ooh, honestly, maybe potentially worse. Also been recovered poorly. So we've got a fender, tank, kickstand, battery box, some carburetors off of something. Oh, that's probably what they're off of. There's an air box. Some more fenders. There's the exhaust off of this one. But I think what we need is in this box here. Nope. Maybe they're not. All right, last box. Oh, hey, there we go. And they've got the plugs we need. Sweet. All right, grab some parts, head back to the shop. All right, we've got our carbs and parts from the farm, and I've got the plugs in the bottom of these carbs. I highly, highly doubt this is going to do anything when I hook these up, but they do move freely, and... When I ran some fuel in them, it ran out and it didn't look too dirty, but I will definitely be rebuilding these carbs for the hell of it. Let's see if they work. I don't see any leaks, and I know it flows to the bowls. All right, well, let's see what happens. No way, it actually pulled fuel up. I might be able to plug them off with my hand while giving them throttle to help suck any shit out of the carb jets, and it might go. Yes! 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 
sense <laughs> i guess this thing just wants to live well i guess we start cleaning it up now <laughs> hard part's done thing runs perfect what the hell actually one more thing before we move away from the carburetors that i needed to address mechanically about them i've got some new fuel lines on here and in doing that i noticed note the uh, height of that throttle slide versus the height of that throttle slide see how much lower that one is, then this one is, that's called synchronization between carburetors and they need to be properly synchronized where those throttle slides are at the same height. Now you can do this using multiple vacuum gauges or hydrometer gauges that are uh, things full of liquid and as the vacuum pulls on, especially bikes with like four carbs, the four levels of fluid will become equal. Hopefully I can find a clip of that to make my explanation make more sense. But what you need to do is adjust your throttle idle speeds on each one until they are synchronized. So watch as I lower this. Yeah, there we go. Now we're getting a little closer to this one over here and I can get something that I can find around here to measure those and make sure they're the same. But I bet even right now already, if I fire this back up, it will not be idling up around three grand. And as you notice, I would rev it and it would zing and slowly come back down. Now, with these set at the right height on each side, it will come down much quicker because one of them was letting too much air into the motor. All right, she's all synced up. I've got the same amount of turns here as I do here. Let's see how much better it runs. Oh, oh. It actually is idling. better return I thought I might have had them set a little low but it seems to be idling just fine god that's cool all right now that the bike instantaneously runs perfect we can focus on making it look good and have a battery and brakes and all that good stuff first off let's talk batteries more specifically sourcing batteries for old motorcycles or any other form of power sports the three wheelers four wheelers blah 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 what I've done for years, because usually I want a battery same day, because when I get the hitch to go ride something, I want to go ride it right now instead of order a battery and wait a week, is I go down to Walmart and I get an EverStart battery. Now you may say, well, Kevin, I've gone down to Walmart and they don't have the exact model number I need. Here's a little trick. For the most part, these batteries are all pretty much the same amperage. All of these motorcycle batteries are about 200 cold cranking amps, or as close as they can be to it for their relative size, some over, some under. But relative size is exactly the only thing that matters. All I do when it comes to buying a new battery is hop on the internet, look up the original battery size, try to find the length, height, and width, and then go to Walmart and look at the top of the box and match that length, height, and width, and then buy the biggest battery I can fit in that battery box, thus giving me the most cranking amps that can fit within that relative size. If you buy the ones like this, you will have to take, uh-oh. Somebody's filled this already. I guess that saves me some time. It might even be charged. Anyway, they have two types of batteries for sale at Walmart, dry and pre-filled. This is a dry battery that you bring home, cut this thing of battery acid open, and then fill all the cells and charge it overnight. The other type they have there is pre-filled, which is pull off the shelf, put straight into your vehicle, but they're about 50 bucks more. This right here is about 45 bucks. Something in a similar size pre-filled was about 90. So I guess thank you to whoever filled this for me. Hopefully they even charged it and I essentially did get a pre-filled battery that I can throw straight into this bike uh, for $45. Cool. Unfortunately, whoever did this was clueless. This red hose is to fill the cells on the end of that little tank. This hose is not to be cut. <laughs> this is the one that you hook right here to your vent 
and then run down below the chassis so that when it charges normally and just that needs to vent air because it's not a sealed case, it doesn't vent that acidic air onto your bike and rust it out. One thing you should check though before you leave the store is open up the box and make sure your terminals are the correct style. Are they a style that mounts from the side like this or the more common style that screws in from above? This was supposed to be one from above, but yeah, I was able to make these work just fine. <laughs> Alright, this process is going to take the longest, so I better get started on it now. It looks like someone attempted to line this tank, but like, not with tank liner. I don't, I don't know what this is. It's all around it, unfortunately. It's going to make this a bit of a pain in the ass in a unique situation, but usually what I do is I get a pressure washer. Pressure wash as much of this tank as I can to break all of the rust, or in this case, paint loose. Get it out of the tank the best your ability and then fill this sucker up with some form of evapo rust or something to that extent i still suggest putting a filter in line because even though it gets everything it never always gets everything as for this one this stuff is going to make this a whole new flavor of difficult in other news i do see some of the original paint poking through here all right do the pressure washer i guess Post bath, the bike is looking excellent. Like I can't believe how well that engine case and everything cleaned up. Everything, I mean, still needed a little work with some steel wool, but look how, like, look at the tank on the oil. It's incredible. And speaking of tanks, as you can see, our fuel tank looks a ton better, and it is the perfect stage to get all that pitting and all that flash rust off with some evapo rust, and this sucker should be good to go. It took forever blowing at it with an air gun. Going like this a bunch, but I finally got all of that tank liner out. Also, as you can see, during the pressure wash, the tractor paint all got blown off. This this color here, if you remember, is what the whole tank was like. And now it's back to its original blue. It's rough, but it's there. It's almost it's almost patina level, you know? Oh hell, it's hard to look at something shiny and not make it shiny. Let's see how this comes out. Got a bit of steel wool, some Double lot if I grab the right piece anyway. You know what? It ain't perfect chrome, but it's never gonna be unless it gets redone. That looks a lot better though. Let's do the whole thing. All right, so the tank is currently sitting in the sink full of evapo rust leaking all over the place. Turns out it's got a couple pinholes in it. We'll get to those later. I think the next thing we can work on is these, the side panels. I found these. I forgot they were actually above my office. And as you can see, they're not great. These things are absolutely beat to hell. Not so much, this one's better, I guess, but this one looks like it literally went through a wood chipper. So I guess I could sand them down, get them smooth again, and then figure out what color to paint them. Tom, I have these big ugly things. They are ugly. I brought beer. Can we make them look better for a dollar? Oof. <laughs> You're asking a lot. <laughs> you got some bed liner? <laughs> Oh boy. Well, we'll see what we can do. It's actually cleaning up better than you might have thought. I could have done this by hand, but I know you have one of those and I don't. <laughs> Thing is, that's the good one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, with the exception of that big hole in the side, that's not bad. Uh, a little bit of plastic filler here and there, and a good primer, and it, actually, I've saved worse. <laughs> it cleaned up all right. Oh, okay. yuck, this was the good one. <laughs> you might want a beer before you start you that one. You might be right. Actually, didn't screw it up too bad. I think 
you have a lot of filler, but if you have to save one, <laughs> yeah, good. you could. You could save it if you needed to. I think this stuff on is going to be rubbing on the ground. That's good concrete box. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 25 bucks. 25 dollars. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> we wasted that much already. Well, the beer cost 24. You beer. Since I just hopped on eBay and ordered new panels for a whopping $40. We got the ability to do some custom stuff for this one. <laughs> Still going in the trash can. We, we don't even know if most of this stuff sprays. <laughs> we, we can only assume the color of half of them. <laughs> most of it's just John Deere green. Just whatever you have. If it's on sale, when you walk through the store and there's the clearance aisle, you just scoop it all in. Two dollars a can? <laughs> I'm buying it all. Her it's always funny primer. colors of paint. It's never spicy beef jerky. I think I'd rather use one of those more than the other if they were on sale. <laughs> I've given a body man who's followed the rules. <laughs> that breaks the ball loose. Never mind. I don't even need to say it. I think they know what's going on. <laughs> I've given him creative freedom. I don't even know what color blue this really is. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> Is that the good clearance Krylon? That's the sticks to plastic Krylon. <laughs> sticks to everything. Sticks to your nose hairs. Funny thing is that's about like the color that I pressure washed off the tank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do we do next? I don't have time to do flames. The trick is to not let it dry, right? I don't know, I've never <laughs> done this before. Oh hell, the, the cap is yellow, but it appears to be red. <laughs> I guess we're getting red. Hey, there it goes. Oh. It's well, it did. Oh, this is. Oh, oh. How's that? Yeah. Do we want it to run down more? Yeah. Oh, you gotta make it look like it's going fast. Oh, other way. That's the front. That's the now. Front. It's, yeah, now it's going to reverse. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it looks like camels in heat. <laughs> what are we gonna side. do on the other side? I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> Tom, that one gold. Looks, that looks real older gold? than me. <laughs> that's real gold. That, that's probably got real lead in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I'm sniffing it. Go home. <laughs> hey, this one sprays. Oh, that's terrible. That's the most ugly color I've ever seen. Oh God. <laughs> Is that a Baroque gold? <laughs> I'm disappointed. I might go see if I can get my two dollars back. <laughs> I want my two dollars. That is. That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. If the paint's not bad, <laughs> the, the texture is. <laughs> How do we dry that enough to mask it? We just have a beer about it. Okay. All right. There we go. The what? Oh God. If you want gloves, you got to get the gloves out of the condom machine. You were not kidding. Where did you get that? Never mind. Never, I didn't ask. <laughs> That's the Cadillac of condom machines. I'd be scared to see what the Chevy of. <laughs> That's nothing. You ought to see the Mopar. You know what this looks like? It looks like you made this out of clay. <laughs> I know it. It's your junior high <laughs> yeah. clay project. It looks like that turkey that you made in school when you were in five. You just made a clay pottery turkey. Is that it? Is that done? Do we do no, more? No, we gotta think about it some more. Let's have another beer. Okay, another beer about it. Another beer about it. Where did you get that giant pair of scissors? Don't I got work. connections. <laughs> Don't run with those. These are amazing. You can't even walk. I'm a bad boy. I run with scissors. <laughs> What do you got? Old John Deere decals from way back when I worked at the implement. Warning! Avoid possible injury or death from a machine runaway. Do not start engine. I mean, that should just be on everything. <laughs> that should be, I mean, <laughs> should be a factory sticker. You can skip lawyers and you can just get rid of <laughs> Don't <them>. do. <laughs> you can take this, you can win trophies at the next bike show. <laughs> I don't know. I knew a guy that painted his whole 69 Pontiac Grand Prix with Krylon. It was, it was a beautiful car before he started. Oh, <laughs> I was going to ask, how'd that work? 
Well, it was gold, then it was black, and then slowly it became gold again. <laughs> it's been five hours. What, <laughs> what do we have to show for ourselves? Tom? Well, we got warning. <laughs> do not. Toe fast. <laughs> All right. Back to the shop. <laughs> we'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Good morning, folks. Last day here working on the bike. Last night, as you saw, we made well, these. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to have some fun. Not everything in life can be work. I, I think this is a perfect example of that. So like we said last night, I did hop on eBay and order some of these that are, you know, don't have big holes and cuts in them, and they actually match. <laughs> so someday I'll get those replaced and fix this bike up real nice. But for now, yeah, that, well, it's on. How about, let's just say that. All right, next up is the key. Finally get the new one in place. We've got two screws on the back of this headlight. One here, one here. Yes, there it is. It is this guy right here. Orange, gray, and brown. All right, there's our key out. Clean up the one from the parts bike a little bit. There we go. New key plugged in. Just gotta finagle this back up into place. Let's get our lock ring on there. This one's chrome. The one on the other bike was not. I thought that was interesting. Okay, we cleaned that out. And there we go. Let's give it a test. Hey, look at that. Now, what else we fire off today? Let's get a tank and a seat on it. Time for our fuel pet cock. This is our last little obstacle we have to overcome. Pulled this one out of the tank from the parts bike. As you can tell, that tank is worse than the one that we cleaned. Oh God. We don't have a rebuild kit for this, and we don't have a new one on hand. And we're running out of time, so let's see what we can do to try to save this pet cock. There should be an inlet here and an inlet here. This one is your on position inlet, which sits a couple inches above the bottom of the tank and only drains the fuel to this level. At that point, you change it to reserve and you will pull the fuel from down here. And now you can burn that last inch and a half of fuel, last gallon that's in your tank. In our case, we want to run this pretty much only on on since there's still some crap in our tank, despite me doing my best to flush it out after the evapo rest. It's good. Well, I don't even know if I should say good. It's okay, but it's not great. <laughs> it's better, okay? It's better. We do have a little sediment bowl on this one, so let's see if I can get that guy open. I can't, sweet. It's not that bad in there. So that right there is a filter screen. Let's see if he wants to come out. Yay! Honestly, inside? It's not looking bad. The problem, I'm assuming, is going to be the valve. What's the chance this uses a normal O-ring that I have a new one of, or the O-ring survives and it doesn't leak fuel all over my leg and I burst into flames like Ghost Rider? Yeah, it's a rubber seal and it's all eaten up. Can I gently peel him away from the edge and preserve it? Probably not. Work with me. No way, I actually did it. Well, I need to hog the holes out a little bit so that they're larger, but that might work. Cool. So all I really need to do is set it up to where this one's flowing in here, clean up all this up here, and all this looks good on the bottom. We should potentially have a working pet cock. Let's find out. All right, I've got our fuel selector all cleaned up. It flows and does not leak, so that all appears to work good. I soaked the O-ring in some WD-40. If you didn't know it, WD-40 reconditions rubber. Helps it swell a little bit. And hopefully that little bit is just enough for this to protrude above our base surface and seal up to the tank. Now there's supposed to be rubber seals right here and right there. That one's not great, to say the least. I could use RTV. It doesn't hold up the gas very well, slash at all. So I gotta wonder... If I could use thread tape on the bolts. Let's find out. Never tried this before. 
Yeah, it feels like the thread tape works just fine. Now, will the O-ring work and seal the selector to the tank? I don't know. All right, one last repair before we put our tank on the bike. As you can see right there, there's a little hole that I found when I was cleaning. And there's a couple other questionable spots along this uh, seam as well. So I'm going to get some epoxy in there and seal that down. Once again, can't use RTV. The gasoline will eat right through any RTV. What we need to use here is a two-part epoxy such as JB Weld or any clear hardening epoxy. My favorite is Hardman Double Bubble Epoxy. This stuff is awesome. If any of you were in the service, I apologize for the PTSD flashback you just had after seeing this for the first time in 10 years. This was the only epoxy we were allowed to use on helicopters and this stuff does an excellent job. Each one of these little packs is about a dollar, so they might seem a little spendy, but if you do the math, that's actually cheaper than a couple sticks of JB Weld because there's a lot more epoxy in here and it's just a lot better. You can find these online all over the place. The cheapest place I have found them is SanfordEpoxy.com. That's Sanford-Epoxy.com. They've got ooh, a whole bunch of flavors actually. A hundred pack is $97 on here. Other spots it's like a buck twenty, buck thirty. I wonder what the blueberry one tastes like. Once you squeeze everything out, you can mix it up. It'll turn bright white. Then you can go ahead and apply it like I already have done because I forgot to turn the camera on the first time. And then it'll clear perfectly dry. <laughs> With that, I think our tank is done minus the fact that I still haven't found a gas cap. So I'm going to run around the shop and figure out what else needs glued to its stuff while I have one of these mixed up and we'll be back. All right, time to get this tank on. I'm missing one of these rubber isolators up front, but that's about the same size as a rubber bushing for a new shock on a car. Here we go. Now for the test fit. <laughs> that worked way too well. Sweet. The bike has a tank once again. Let's get that wired down or zip tied down or something. Plumbed up and filled up. A little bit of D-germ on our seat here. Clean her up. Hey, check this out. Vehicle inspection stickers from the 80s back when Iowa actually needed that for a very brief time. I did find the title for this. It was last titled in the year 2000 and it was signed into someone else's name and they never went and titled it. So I don't think they ever actually drove it. That does make it a little difficult for me to title, but thankfully I was able to find the person who is actually registered on the title as the previous owner. And he said he's gonna run out of the courthouse and see if he can get us a reprint and I'll have a clean title for this sucker. Done. Ta-da! Suzuki GT185 which is leaking fuel. All right, that's fixed. They had some filler on the bottom of the tank. I had to strip off and epoxy all those holes, but now it's good. The last step for this bike is a fuel cap, which I don't have, <laughs> but I do have that rubber plug and some painter's tape. Obviously we want to be safe, so we'll give it two pieces of tape. Perfect, let's go for a ride. Actually, I take it back, there's one last step. I gotta get her chain oiled up. We got some chain wax. Once that's done, we can go for a ride. Yard test 
went well. Let's take it for a lap around the town. Oh, that's got to be the most disappointing start I've ever done in a video. Let's just all pretend that ever happened. Yeah, here we go. First try. <laughs> For the record, it's like 40 degrees out and I'm freezing. two strokes. I keep wanting to shift and I probably shouldn't be. There we go. That was a good one. You know what? This thing's loud and obnoxious. I'm sure the whole town knows about it now. And I don't, I don't have any license plates on it, so we should probably call it there. Two whole miles. Hell yeah. two-stroke guy that idle mm, just popping popcorn reminds me of riding snowmobiles she is loading up a little bit on one cylinder here and there it's got a little tuning that needs done I mean I never took the carburetors apart it's a miracle I was even able to ride this without doing that but that is all stuff for another day if you guys enjoyed the motorcycle revival let me know down in the comments leave a like leave a share and we'll see you right here next week for another episode of junkyard digs